What's going on you two, uh, fellow amputees, new amputees, uh, about to be amputees. Uh, this is episode three of my uh, Amputee 101 series and this is just gonna cover, um, you know, adjusting to life as an amputee. So for those of you that have just lost their leg or is just going through that process of getting your prosthetic finally, uh, this is more aimed for you guys. This is more aimed for people in the stage where they've just received their first prosthetic or their check socket um, and you know just kind of adapting to life with those things in mind and uh, I have a little note section here because there's just a lot to go over um, so one thing I noticed with me when I when I lost my leg was um, getting from bed to the bathroom and doing that if I woke up emergency I had a vomit or if I was sick or something like that and I you know uh, you got to prepare for these things uh, as an amputee it's not just like getting out of bed and running over to the bathroom it just doesn't it's not like that so you know there's steps to it you know you got to take off your shrinker socks um, then you gotta put your, roll your liner on. Then you gotta put your leg on. Then you gotta tighten it. If you're new to it, especially you'll have to be tightening it. It's not like it'll just pop on at your stage, uh, and it can be you know quite a pain to deal with. So uh, you know you can do a few routes either you can crawl. Um, there's no shame in that. I used to crawl uh, to the bathroom or I would hop. I don't recommend it if you are not good with balance. Uh, that's not one of the safer ways, so I'm not going to recommend hopping to anyone. Please don't, uh, only unless you feel confident in that you're able to do what you need to do and hop to where you need to go, but you can have an accident that way and it can be pretty bad. So, uh, for those of you that just feel like, you, you know, if you wake up or you have bladder issues, you know, having a urinal on the side of the bed is probably a good idea for you. Um, uh, depending on you know your youthfulness and your age and your athleticism and stuff like that um, you know sometimes you know it just depends on the emergency if, if you got to go to the bathroom really bad you know at that point I'll just crawl but if if it's something I you know that I can hold I wake up I gotta go to the bathroom I'll go ahead and put my leg on uh, and go that way uh, uh, that but also when you're sick you know if you're if you got a cold or uh, you got the flu, it's flu season now, heck, COVID. Uh, having a bucket, uh, just a five gallon bucket, they're like $2 in Walmart, having a five gallon bucket um, on the side of the bed would really help you out, you know, line it with the trash bag and everything. But that's, you know, just, you gotta take preemptive precautions. You have to think ahead before because there's gonna come times where you're not gonna have that time to just take the shrinker off and then uh, put your liner, uh, you know, your your pin and socket liner on and then pop your leg on and stuff like that. Sometimes there'll be emergencies where you gotta go, you gotta go. So I always recommend uh, putting a uh, trash pail, trash bucket, a five gallon bucket with a trash bag on the side of the bed if you're sick. Um, if you have a hard time getting to the restroom or holding your bladder, I recommend getting a side urinal. It can be really weird at first. Um, uh, when I first started wearing my, my check socket, the one that I was getting into so they could adjust and make this the, into the solid socket, um, I remember I would have the urinal on the side because it was too painful and I couldn't crawl. Uh, my leg was pretty sensitive and, and stuff like that so I would use the side urinal and it's kind of weird at first but you get used to it um, but that's just you know there's a look at some of those things and uh, I'm also gonna go over like showering methods when I first lost my leg no one really explained a good method now my insurance covers two shrinkers two liners and one prosthetic and so what I, what I do is I keep a uh, liner stand on the side of the tub. I have a shower chair. Um, I know there's some of you that are thinking, yeah, I want to do it. I want to have a shower leg eventually, or I want to, you know, I want to do that route. Well, keep in mind, if you're standing in the shower and you have a shower leg on, 
anything that's underneath that liner is not going to be getting washed. You're going to have to sit down manually and either use wet wipes or something like that. And I, I, it's not that cleanliness. It's not that clean. I don't recommend shower lakes. I just don't think it's that hygienic. I don't think that they're uh, very effective. Yeah, maybe for every bit of your body but your nub. Um, I, you know, uh, me, I just would rather use the shower chair. And, um, you know, another thing that goes on is people have to wash your liners, wash your shrinkers. And the shrinkers you can wear over and over for about a week or you can oscillate between shrinkers at night. And then once you pull them off and like you get like dust, you'll see some skin dust when you snap it. It's time to wash them. So you'll throw one in the wash or both in the wash if you're doing laundry that day. That way you have two clean ones. Always air dry them. Don't put them in the dryer because you can melt those silicone grips at the very end of the shrinkers. Um, and never, never dry your, your prosthetic liners either um, but for those that don't have a washing machine or access to stuff like that I, I have a different method to to that and I'm gonna go over all that I'm gonna go over some hacks some uh, things that I figured out that kind of will take the edge off for anyone else um, that's in that phase right now that's in the learning and trial and error and let me tell you trial and error when it comes to making a mistake by overusing your leg it can cost you two weeks in bed it can cost you two weeks on crutches you know not stopping and and drying your leg off on a hike when it's a real hot day and your legs sweaty that can cost you two weeks you know from skin erosion there's a lot of different things so i'm going to cover a lot in this video um hopefully hopefully everyone uh, follows to the end i mean it if you if you if you're in, in the need for the help, I know you'll end up watching the whole thing. Um, so, you know, people will watch what they need to watch and get the details they need to get details. That's fine. Um, so let me go back to my notes. So basically, I want to go over um, how how to shower uh, and my method of showering the process that I go through. So I'm gonna go ahead and take you along with me. I don't like editing, so we're just gonna go along here. Let me see if I can get a good view. Let's see if that'll do there. Yeah, that looks good. So what I do is I normally will take off all my clothes I obviously won't have shoes it'll just be me in my liner and my prosthetic I will step in sit down on my chair make sure that you you're on there securely it's not leaning or, or slipping I'll then pop my leg off set it outside the shower unroll the liner And then I will take that, set it back here, close this, start the shower. And I recommend if you're an amputee, get one that has, uh, you know, this extension to it in some form or fashion. It makes it a lot easier to reach areas. If you don't have these secure bars, um, standing up on one leg with your nub can be quite dangerous in the shower. You might slip, fall and uh, it, it happens to everyone at least once. Um, so I'm lucky that I have these, I'm in uh, disabled housing, so they came with it, but I recommend having one of those. I will then wash my leg, and I'm gonna recommend HibaCleanse. This is surgical hand wash, it's antimicrobial, and I will go ahead and I will put this on my hands. I will lather up on my leg with fresh water. I will wash my whole entire nub. I will let it sit and rinse. After I let it, you know, I scrub it in, let it lather, sit for maybe about 10, 15 seconds, and then I'll rinse it off. I'll then pop this open, pour a little on the top, set that down, kind of drip it down the sides, and I will work this with my hands you don't want to use something that has coarse edges like this, the, these the loofahs, they're kind of rough. Um, and that can actually 
create pores in your silicone liner that can actually trap bacteria. And trapping that bacteria is going to cause infections and stuff like that. I'm actually dealing with a infection right now that I'm on antibiotics for because I have uh, I'm prone to skin problems and acne so um, I really have to keep my leg clean and so using Hibiclans make sure you rinse it off real thoroughly and then I will take this one and I will as it's wet I will then continue to wash the outside in the shower and then I will place it back here until I'm done showering. After I'm done showering, I'll grab my towel, I'll dry my leg off. I will then take the clean one that I have cleaned from the previous shower. After my legs nice and dry, you always want your leg to be really dry when applying this. You don't want any water, any moisture, so make sure you dry your leg really well. I recommend keeping uh, petroleum jelly on the side of the tub here. Um, for me, if I have any friction marks, uh, sores that are in the, uh, the crease area, <clears throat> putting just a tiny little dabble on the areas that have friction. Let's take a little bit there. And say like I had a pimple or a, a rash, a skin erosion right there. I put just the smallest, smallest, thinnest layer I could. And I will roll it back up. Swing out of the shower. I will then put my leg on. Now, there are pin and lock sockets that make clicking noises. Um, you want to make sure you hear those clicks before you take a step with your prosthetic. For me, it's silent. So I just push on and this little thing will turn and I see it turning and it's on. Um, for people that have just had their leg done, uh, they just got into a thing, uh, their prosthetic, the leg still has swelling. When you shower, the hot water is going to retain in your uh, nub, your residual nub. So you might have a harder time getting your leg back on after you shower. So if you can get the first pin, the first tooth set into the, uh, the gear, take a quarter and stick it in the little slit and turn, turn the quarter until you, you feel it tighten all the way or until you feel it's comfortable. Never overdo it. Your body will find the right amount. And if there's issues, obviously you would bring that up with your prosthetist. So then at that point, I would step out of the shower. I would dry myself off. I will take the liner I just cleaned, as it's all wet, both sides are wet, place it back on my stand rack and place that on the side of the tub. And that's sitting on the side of the tub there. There's the shower, the shower head, how I have it all set up. And then that's where that sits so I can immediately apply anything to frictions or sores and I have a fresh clean uh, prosthetic liner um, that will be drying and I'll be wearing this one for the day and then um, the next morning I'll wake up I'll put this my dirty one on still and I'll grab my fresh clothes I'll come in here and I will wash the one that I'm wearing and then I will let that one dry and I will wear that one for the next day and that prevents me from having to wash them in the uh, the wash machine and then air dry and I think you know wash them in the wash machine make sure you wash it with a few towels because you can't take off that pin and it's gonna clank and bang around in there I honestly don't like washing them in the washer I think it it erodes the material and they become uh, broken down uh, pretty fast. I usually prefer hand washing mine and using Hiba cleanse to um, to clean this out really well. That way I know that I have a nice sterile leg. And that's pretty much my shower process. Um, now I'm going to get into some other things um, pertaining to like hiking and outdoor activities. Let me get my camera realigned again. Pardon me, I don't like doing edits. And I'm not good at it. <laughs> I'm 
All right. So back to the notes here. Um, some things to remember, you know, uh, I obviously covered the shower process. Um, keep in mind you have one leg. So when you're, you're showering and if you want to stand up and, t you know, turn your back towards the shower, if you have shower bars, I recommend always keeping one hand on them. If you don't have them, I recommend getting them installed. Um, they are a fail safe. If you slip, you can just grab and hold yourself up most of the time. Um, so that's one step. Get anchored bars in your shower. Uh, if you have any worries or doubts that you're going to slip and fall, um, I would definitely install an extendable shower head to where you can reach all sorts of your body where you don't have to uh, stand up to do such. Um, you can rinse off a lot easier. You can rinse your liner off and do all that stuff uh, a lot easier that way and then you just hang it back up um, try and keep in mind that you are an amputee now that this is life this is what's going to be try and make a mental note so you never make a blind step i've done it um, a few times uh, in different circumstances i've actually taken my leg off to shower and when i stood up in the shower I went to put my weight down and I didn't have a leg on because I forgot I had just popped it off and I fell. That was a quite painful process and landed on the nub. I had to go to the doctor, pain medication. Uh, I couldn't wear my leg for a week after that. I had to let it heal. And it can be quite tender when you fall. It can be quite painful. Um, For those of you that have the, the the pin socket here, the pin lock like I have, and you have a pin set that clicks when you step into it, it'll go click, 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 click. And the, the more you step in it, the, the less clicks you hear because you're getting to where your leg needs to be suspended. Um, for those of you with the click sounding ones, always keep a mental note of how many clicks how many clicks does it does your leg normally rest on your prosthetic prosthetist apologize pro, prosthetist will um, ask you sometimes how many clicks are you hearing when you're putting your prosthetic on keep in mind that number because after a while after two weeks three weeks that number could go from two clicks all the way to five clicks and what that means is that your leg has now atrophied more and more and the socket that you're in is too wide so your nub is bottoming out you're hitting the bottom of the prosthetic with the prosthetic they're angled like this in the shape of your nub in some form not a true cylinder cone but it's aimed like this so when your nub goes in the pressure pushes on all sides, keeping it suspended. The pin will sit suspended in the locking mechanism like that. And that's how you want your leg to be. You never want the pin to be all the way in and your nub bone to be hit, putting pressure on that nub bone because every step you take, you're putting pressure on a bone that's been cut in half. And if you have a bridge, I, that's, that could be even worse. So that's one thing. I'll be in mind of your click count. I have um, one of my first prosthetics. I still wasn't used to it. I, I, it felt uncomfortable, so I stopped. I was walking to the, the uh, shopping go, and I, I stopped on the sidewalk, and I it's like, it's not fitting. So I stood there on one leg. I popped it off, and then I readjusted, and I put it on, and I didn't pay attention. I didn't hear the clicks. I thought it clicked on, so when I went to take a step, my nub came right out of the prosthetic, and I stood, fell, took all my weight straight down and landed right on the tip of my nub with that pin that's going to send the liner moving one, one direction or another, and that's pulling your skin. So you can end up tearing muscle from this hitting cement and bending out. Even that can cause pain. So always be in mind of that count. Now, if yours is silent, I recommend keeping something on your keys. I got this at 
the beer festival, uh, Oktoberfest. Any kind of thing, as long as it fits within the gap, I usually have something on my keychain. You can drill a hole in some kind of uh, coin. Don't don't use currency. Don't get in trouble. Uh, but you can always get something like this. Sometimes the prosthetic office will have little metal cylinders that go on your keychain, and you just stick it in there, and you twist until it's tight all the way, or until you feel that it's tight enough, um, and you don't want to overdo the clicks or the, the amount of notches you're in. You get it to where you feel that it's comfortable, take a few steps, and the rest will do its its part in the prosthetic. It'll it'll settle on the right amount of clicks that way. Um, the other thing is, you, when you're in the summertime, and this goes for people in the south, um, I recommend not getting a black pattern or black carbon fiber or black bandanas or black logos anything black is going to cause a lot of heat when the sun hits this this thing heats up now i live in colorado so we have around six months of cold weather if not more depending on the year so i'm not too worried about it um but it, in, in, the, in the summertime it happens and what it does is it causes your nub to perspire to sweat really bad and when that happens it's not holding grip now you're now it's becoming like it's sliding in and out it's making that suction see that suction right there and over time as you're stepping and it pulls the prosthetic down pushes down pulls down pushes in pulls out pushes in that that sweat that's in between there is now causing friction on pointed edges like the edge of the bone right there it can also cause pressure on areas you don't want so you always want buy it just buy a couple and I usually carry a small backpack just the one with the two strings when I go hiking I always have a water bottle a little cylinder of Vaseline and a towel because while you're hiking or while you're doing your activities out in the summertime you're gonna sweat and what's gonna happen is when this gets too sweaty it doesn't hold its grip you'll start noticing after a while like man my leg hurts my leg hurts why is my leg hurt and then you take it off and you go like this and it's just dripping I've had water just pour out of this thing and I couldn't believe how much sweat was in there there was a little pool in there and that was causing this to not grip my leg properly and that was causing the prosthetic to with gravity to pull down and if you have a short residual nub some people have nubs out to here and it's not that big of a problem but when you have more prosthetic than you have nub that's like the weight in pendulum so uh, you know it's gonna weigh more down it's gonna put pressure on both sides when you walk so you definitely want to make sure that you have a towel you can stop find somewhere to sit don't do it standing dry the leg completely dry your nub completely pull out your little container of Vaseline if you need it if you don't don't do it put it on the corners or, or the joint areas if you're getting friction along uh, the tendons right there uh, along the bone right here. I've, not, I've developed a callus kind of for me. I'm six year amputee, so it's a little different. Um, but you want to make sure you apply what you need to apply to keep it comfortable. And then reapply your leg. Re roll it back on. Make sure your leg hits the full clicks that you have. And over the day, your the amount of clip, when you sleep at night, your body retains water and it's limbs so that's why in the morning you'll notice your prosthetic maybe only click a few times but then as you're actively moving through the day that fluid is getting moved throughout your body so your leg is getting slender you'll notice you might have to put on a second ply sock for ply one or ply two or maybe you get up to ply three but anytime you feel discomfort and you notice discomfort and you feel that discomfort stop and check yourself Check yourself. Is my leg sweaty? Do I need to reapply Vaseline? Do I need to add another ply sock? 
and and play with it. So if you if you uh, are in a three ply and you've been walking all day and it's starting to hurt and you're like, oh, let me sit down. You notice your legs sweaty. You dry it off. You notice there's some friction areas. You apply a little bit of your Vaseline or whatever on those areas. You put your leg back on and you're still having that pain. Go ahead and try throwing an extra ply sock on there. Maybe all you needed was one. There's even half plies. You might only need a half ply. Stick it on there. And if you put it on and it helps, and immediately, for me, I've always noticed an immediate relief. If it's not fitting right, and then I throw an extra ply sock on, I notice that it, I'm not bottoming out. I'm not hitting the rough patches on my leg. I'm able to go again. And it, sometimes it's day and night, but you will have to experiment with it. You might have to add ply socks and then uh, for those of you in high altitude, so Colorado, uh, 5,280 feet is what they say we are above sea level. Um, going hiking, we have 14,000 feet peaks, uh, Pikes Peak and Mount Evans. Uh, so going on big hikes where you're going up in altitude, uh, the higher you go up in altitude, the more pressure is coming down on your body. So one thing you want to bring if you're going to go on a high altitude or you're in a high altitude area bring a ace bandage because when you get to the top of the summit or the peak or wherever you're at and your legs tired you're going to want to take your prosthetic off i'm telling you you're going to want to take it off and just sit there like this because it's just you put so much strain on it and you did it you got the exercise but it's sore if you don't take an ace bandage and immediately wrap it tight around your leg and you leave your leg off for 10 minutes and you try and put that leg back on, if you don't have that ace bandage, your leg's gonna swell with water from the pressure pushing down on your body, pushing fluid into your lower limbs. That's gonna fill with fluid just from sitting for 10 minutes. So uh, you want an ace bandage around the, you know, you can dry your leg off, apply your liner back on, and then ace bandage that and just keep it nice and tight keep it pressurized and then when you're ready to put your leg back on undo it and it should pop right back in place but if you don't bring an ace bandage you might not be able to get it back on for quite some time you know your, your leg might be filling with fluid it could be swelling it might need a ton of rest and you might need help getting back down and you don't that's the worst thing and worst feeling to have is uh, getting somewhere and getting stuck as an amputee, it's a nightmare. Thinking, I live in the Rocky Mountains. I go hiking. Uh, we do black diamond hikes, like uh, almost vertical rocky cliff edges hikes up to Hanging Lake. It's an extreme hike. Uh, kids usually aren't allowed. One kid died up there just recently. Uh, no pets. It's that rugged a terrain, and you're pretty much going vertical on this hike. And um, so I, I always pack an ace bandage just to wrap around my leg just when I need to take it off and relax for a minute. Um, if, if you have one of those, um, if you're a, an above the knee amputee and you have a robotic leg that does the bending, if it runs out of power, whatever position it's in, it could get stuck in. For people like that, um, there's, there's those, uh, you can get a 10,000 or a 100,000 mAh um, battery pack that's a USB chargeable um, and bring that with you. If you have one that's a solar panel uh, charger that char you know takes the sun and then charges battery pack with it, make sure you bring some kind of alternative battery pack to charge your leg. You might have to sit there for an hour while it charges off a little thing, but at least you'll be able to get down without having to call uh, for rescue emergency always bring a battery you know some kind of form of battery like a, a you know a, a extended battery I don't know what else to call them so portable battery packs 10,000 mAh and make sure it's charged before you leave sometimes those things lose charge from sitting over time so make sure you charge it the night before make sure you have your ace bandage make sure you have your your towel uh, your ointment for your leg never lotion your leg before you put your liner on that's a no-no no matter what causes too much slick slickness you don't get the grip that you need and it causes skin erosion um, the scent if you ever use scented lotion it can cause problems and so don't use scented lotion on your nub 
always use like Cetaphil scent free. That's what I recommend is Cetaphil. Uh, if you have really bad sores, I recommend Bag Bomb. Bag Bomb's great. Um, if you have ingrown hairs, if you have ingrown, if you have internal like boils or little infections in pores from getting sweat and dirt in it, um, Prid. Uh, it comes in a little orange can. It's sold at Walmart for like five bucks. Prids. And it's a extracting salve. And you put it on um, several times throughout the day. And that you can actually apply a small pea-sized amount on an affected area and actually put your liner over it. Uh, and that will not affect the, the grip because you're only applying a very small amount to a very small area. And that will help draw out whatever is in there that's causing that infection or that that pore to fill up with pus and that'll just save you in the long run it'll save you healing time it'll save time on how long it takes for that to finally surface and, and excrete itself all those kind of things uh, another tip for the summertime or for people that live in the south um, get antiperspirant um, not deodorant like I said not deodorant no scent, plain, chalk white, Arm & Hammer, any perspirant. The dry white stick, you can use that or they have scent free gel roll on antiperspirant. I have some. this so this is just antiperspirant this is just this even has fresh scent so this probably isn't the best thing to use because it is scented you want to, I thought this one was uh, scent free and the scent's not too strong um, this one probably wouldn't be that bad it's by Medline so I think I think this fresh scent antiperspirant would be fine this is a roll-on stick um, you can see there you, it's self-explanatory the way that you apply any perspirant and this will help prevent sweat for the next day this does not this is not something you apply in the morning before your day of activities this is something you plan ahead and do the night before if you have a bad sweat problem or it's going to be a hundred the next day and you're going to be at the beach or you're going to go on a hike or you're going to be fishing all day and you know you're going to be in the sun you know you're going to be in the heat you know you're going to sweat you want to make sure you take this. If it's the dry stick, you can gently roll it on. Just do a couple lines with the with the Arm and Hammer. You'll see the white streak, and then you take your hand and gently massage it into the nub. With the roll-ons, roll it on. Make sure you evenly coat your nub all the way. Then you're going to take your shrinker, those the gel grips I was talking about that can melt in the dryer. And you're going to apply it. I usually like to wear two of these at night just to give it extra compression. These socks are very important. Do not forget to wear them. Uh, for some of you, you're going to be going through phantom pain and uh, residual nerve damage. You're going to have like fibromyalgia. It'll feel like your pinky toes are being cut off. It's going to feel like electricity is going through your nub. It's going to be really hard to deal with while you're sleeping. And I found that the tighter you can compress your leg at night, the less sensations that I ultimately got. So you wear that overnight. Then the next day you'll go where you you know, you put your liner on that you have from yesterday. Put your leg on. Get your clothes that you want to wear for the day. Take a shower on the shower chair. That will wash off any residual chemicals left by this. Your skin will absorb the antiperspirant. The difference between deodorant and antiperspirant, antiperspirant means anti-sweat. This will prevent your sweat glands from creating sweat. Deodorant is cover-up. Deodorant covers the odor, it deodors. So you want to take away the sweat, antiperspirant. Never deodorant, never a combo. Only do antiperspirant. And you only do that the night before, and then the next day when you shower, anything that hasn't been absorbed will go ahead and be cleaned. 
I also recommend not using scented uh, like Axe body wash or female um, flowery scent my wife uses like uh, a bath and body and for amputees you don't want to wash your nub with scented stuff you don't want to wash the liner that you're you know the one that you use for the day before that you're gonna hang to dry you don't want to use scented soap on that I really recommend just HIBA cleanse uh, HIBA cleanse on the nub and HIBA cleanse on the liner and make sure you wash it off really thoroughly you'll feel it kind of get like a stick and you'll feel that there's absolutely no oil left it'll feel squeaky clean literally squeaky clean just from HIBA cleanse so that's what I recommend there um, besides those things uh, besides keeping a urinal on the side of the bed at first if you're sick make sure you have a vomit bucket um, make sure you're mentally keeping prepared notes of how many clicks your legs in how many you how many clicks is in the morning how many clicks is uh, does it take after an hour of activity these are all things you want to start keeping mental notes on and I know it seems like a lot eventually it's not gonna be a lot it's gonna be second nature you're not gonna think about the clicks you're gonna be so it's just gonna hop in and go I just stick this thing on and I know when it's on I can feel I can feel the smallest pebble under my foot and it's not even a real foot I only have four inches of my shin but I can feel a pebble if I step on a pebble I can feel just any of the slightest bit just because it will come to you in time it's not something that happens overnight uh, it is discouraging it's very discouraging so I recommend uh, just keeping your chin up keeping a positive attitude get a journal get a log you know write notes down prosthetic notes at least for the first couple months maybe the first year you know um, uh, and then bring those notes with you when you go to your prost prosthetist and say you know here's my notes for the first week I was at three clicks when I first put it on and then at the end of the day I was in a five ply and then you, you know you have all the data that for every day Monday through Monday, for at least a week and I'm assuming you'll probably see your prosthetist once a week or once every two weeks bi-weekly um, you might be at the, the point where you're seeing them once a month now um, and they're getting your finalized socket and this stuff even applies to you because you're still adapting you're just getting your first official uh, custom socket that that's yours it's not a heavy check socket it's gonna be your actual foot um, so oh, some other things I want to mention for people that live in the south uh, people that live in not just the south wow uh, anywhere that if you live by the ocean if you if you are able to um, go in the ocean if, if your prosthetic is I, I have a pin and lock socket I can swim with this thing on I could crawl through sand mud I can wade through water rivers I can do anything with this prosthetic because it's very analog it's very simple pin and locks and a gear locking mechanism and military grade uh, parts and so uh, people that have analog just to, I call them analog because they're not digital they don't have a computer chip um, you don't have to keep them dry you know I prefer those I prefer to be able to wear my leg in the ocean and do those things without having to put a big old bag over it or the the sealable bags and worry that if it leaks there goes a, a fifty thousand dollar leg that broke you know or you fried the circuit board um, but if you're getting into salt water with these usually there's going to be somewhere along the beach um, that has a fresh water stand you just push a button fresh water comes out before you even get home if you wade through that water go over to those water stands if you have to go into the restroom hopefully you can get this under the sink but I recommend as fast as you can get this thing rinsed out completely Tay, if you have an inner piece take it out there'll be sand all in here you want to make sure you rinse the inside out you want to make sure you get all the inside because there'll be grime and sand and you can hear it crunching and grinding as you walk so after you know a day at the beach make sure you bring it up to the water station and rinse it off take this out let water run through the leg and it will come out there's little exit pores on this leg where it's meant to drain 
rinse all this salt water out. If you have spring mechanisms, this is a shock absorber and a torque twist. It's a dual, dual piece, so it takes pressure and it turns so I don't tear my ACL. I don't want to ruin this, so I make sure that I wash and I flush this leg completely. The other thing you want to do after spending time at any place with sand, if you, even if it's not the ocean, if it's a freshwater lake, you want to rinse out the, the foot shell. And I know a lot of prosthetics now are coming without the foot shell and I can't wait to get out of a foot shell because I absolutely hate them and I burn through them really fast. Make sure you're rinsing out all the sand that's in here. This Kevlar sock is meant to keep the blade or your prosthetic um, foot from making squeaky noises inside of here. It literally prevents a uh, 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 little squeaky noises as you walk. If you start hearing those, it's probably because your Kevlar sock is uh, torn up pretty bad from grime, sand, dirt, whatever. It's always good to even wash that out from time to time. You can bring your prosthetic in the shower and just maybe once a month rinse out a real nice, uh, you know, a good rinse deep in that foot shell. If you have the tool to pop your, your foot shell off, and this one I can actually pop the foot shell off and it becomes a running blade. It has a grip on the running blade, but it's only meant for um, soft ground like the flat sand at the beach that's just been packed down. Uh, grass fields, that's about it that I can do with this blade. But, um, you know, you can rinse that off once a month in the shower just, and it prolongs the life of your prosthetic. And it prevents having to go into the doctor and have them take a look at it or have them order another part. It'll save you because these foot shells aren't cheap. They can be up to $600 for a stupid little thing that holds your shoe on. It's ridiculous. Another thing is, when you start walking, you're going to end up using the toes. The tip of the blade will eventually burst through and tear a hole in this foot shell. So one thing you can do is ask your prosthetic uh, professional, your, your uh, mechanical engineer that's doing your leg, ask him to seal epoxy on a very thin so it doesn't affect the height level and they can adjust it if it does. A very thin layer of shoe sole and have it epoxied onto the bottom this will keep your foot shell lasting over six months uh, I couldn't keep these things for more than six months before I'd have to go in and get a new one then I would drill holes in it and I would turn them into little foot flower pots and give them give them away as gifts because that was pretty cool um, and they had drainage already with the cuts and stuff like that but I was tired of having to order new ones, so I had, I had modifications. This this prosthetic, um, this is the Phil Hour All Pro. And this, the, I love the foot, love the design, love the springiness. This is not a beginner leg, but if you do have one, uh, or you have a prosthetic that has an arch, having them put a rubber sole on the back, especially if it sticks out farther than the heel, if you're walking down cement steps or you're hiking, anything that's behind it, if the step's taller than where you, then if the step is taller than here, it's gonna step on the back and you're gonna scrape this carbon fiber blade up. It's gonna look horrible. Have them put a rubber grip on the back. You can ask them to do these things. They will do these things um, if they have the material to do them. If they don't. That's pretty sad because every every uh, prosthetic company I've gone through has been able to do the light modifications that I've wanted. Here's another one. I, I'm out fishing a lot. So when I have to get down on my knees on the gravel and unhook a fish or do something like that, or if I'm, if I'm hiking and I got to use my knees to climb, when you, when you have a blow the knee and you try and use your knee, this whole front gets scraped up. And that can, that can look really bad. So I had them add a foam lip so that it sticks out farther than the prosthetic. And when I'm leaning down on my knee, I'm more leaning on that. There's less going on this and more taking it from this pad here. And that just keeps it looking prettier for longer. Um, it does make it wider. You're gonna have a problem wearing jeans. 
The other thing is, <clears throat> the longer the liner, mine goes all the way up to my groin. I wanted that. Most people will cut them. They, they'll cut them to here. Or they'll cut them right, right above where their prosthetic is. And most of the time, it'll leave a little bubble. Like when you bend your leg, it'll leave a little arch. Notice when I bend my leg that this thing doesn't arch at all. There's no air getting in there. There's no fart noises. There's no trapped air. That's a problem for many people. The way to resolve that, don't have them cut the liner. Tell them, I want it as long as possible. And if they ask why, because the more that's there grabbing onto your leg, the less you're going to need one of those overliners that, that goes over this and then grabs on to your leg and it holds from here to here. It's a band that goes on and it just grabs. And those can be so thick that when you bend your leg, the rolls start to hurt. It can hurt bad. So uh, I avoid those overshells by keeping my leg liner all the way up now for men and women uh, if you're trying to if you need to take your leg off if you're wearing jeans and you need to take your leg off you're gonna have to find a bathroom if you have a long liner uh, and even if you have it cut short if your jeans can't pull above where that liner is if your liner c cuts to here but your jeans can only pull up to here while you're wearing them you're not gonna be able to get underneath there to unroll this. It'll still be underneath there. I wear shorts and when I wear jeans, I always have my legs showing. I know there's people that are self-conscious and I get that. That's totally okay. I'm very open. I want people to know if I'm limping, it's not, you know, uh, because of anything but besides my prosthetic. And I, you know, I, I get a lot more questions asked if I was in the military and did I get my leg blown off and all this silly nonsense there. Uh, but you know, I just find that when you have something that's a lot longer, uh, you're going to have to take your pants down at a public restroom, uh, or at home, or if you're hiking, find a private spot in the woods off a trail, pull your pants off one leg, leave them on this, take your jeans off. That way you can access the tip. Because your jeans definitely are not going to roll up to here. I know your jeans won't roll up to here unless you're wearing Jankos. And I've been seeing Jankos since the 90s. So uh, I, I have to deal with that. That's the negative side of a long silicone liner. Is that I can't, I can't take it off to dry my nub. I can't take it off to reapply ointment. I can't take it off to readjust it. Or if I get an air bubble or, or anything that feels uncomfortable. And I just want to readjust it. I have to go take my jeans off one leg, that way it's exposing the full liner. I will take the liner off, dry, reapply, do all that, then I will put my pants on. For me, I've noticed that jeans pull my pants down from the sides of my prosthetic being in there. And the giant arch doesn't really go good with jeans. It just, it doesn't look, there's not, it's not a foot, it bows out in the back. I actually prefer I roll it up and I will put my jeans on. I will roll them just on one side, leave this leg down. I will roll it into a little band that sits right above here. So I'll have my liner on, I'll put my jeans on, I'll fold it up, I'll put this on and I'll push down and I'll just unroll one flip of it. There, there should be several rolls of it if you're wearing jeans and I will just undo it once and tuck it so you have a little bit of looseness right here. It's not like every time you walk, this thing's sliding up because it's like high water. So you wanna have a little bit of bagginess to it, but I typically wear my jeans over above it. So there's no, this is always showing and I don't mind, that's a personal preference. Uh, but those are just some of the things that you're gonna have to get used to. You know, you're gonna have to find time to find a restroom to do that or use one of those over over covers and trying to wear jeans with an over cover one of the the grip liners that grip from right here to about here good luck getting jeans over that as well make sure like bulk depends where your amputation is it, it really depends but you know i it's one of those things what would you rather would you rather have to go to the bathroom uh and and 
to adjust your leg, which might not, you might not even have to do if it's a cold day. I don't sweat. I don't have to adjust my leg all day in the wintertime. So usually I don't have to, and I wear shorts every day of the summer. So in the winter, I'm not having to really mess with my leg, but that's, I live in Colorado. If you're in Florida, you're in shorts every day. You don't have to wear jeans. You can take your leg off whenever you want. Some people are gonna have issues with sweating and readjusting, reapplying ointment to friction burns, um, rub draw areas. If you're starting to build calluses on, on at pointed bone tips like I do, things like that, you're gonna wanna be able to reapply ointment, dry it off, and make sure that you get the, the liner put back on properly after the sweat has kind of moved it off place. And that's gonna get you feeling comfortable again. If you ignore these things, Plan on being in bed for a week. Plan on using crutches for a week. Plan on using a wheelchair for a week. Plan on uh, a lot of pain. And the longer you go without wearing your prosthetic, and then you go to put it back on, the more awkward, weird feeling. It's gonna feel real hard, real intrusive. It's not gonna feel snug like it used to. It's gonna feel really awkward and real hard. It's a, it's a weird feeling. And it feels like it, you're walking in a, a wooden shoe. If you could stick your foot in a wooden shoe that doesn't flex or bend, that's kind of what it feels like after you go a week without wearing your leg. You're like, whoa, it feels like I'm wearing a wooden thing. And it takes about a day to a week to readjust. And it's one of those things, if you don't use it, you lose it. So you got to fight through the pain sometimes. But make sure that you're not doing it to a point where you're not checking to make sure you don't have skin abrosion or that you need Vaseline ointment or that you need to dry off the sweat um, you know or your gear starts uh, your pin lock starts messing up because you went to the the ocean and, and were wading out in the water out there collecting seashells and you forgot to rinse the salt water out of it that can cause a nightmare for your prosthetist to adjust as well the bolts and screws will eventually start to rust. And when they start to rust, your prosthetist is gonna have a hard time getting them out. Plan on being at the prosthetist, the, the prosthetic office for over an hour. You know, there's there's things that can make it complicated. And uh, just, just keeping mental notes of some of these things I mentioned today uh, can really change it all. Uh, it can make things from a living hell and trying to figure out how the heck do I get past this? This keeps happening to me. Why does this keep happening? I hope that I've solved some of your guys' questions. I hope that um, you've kind of figured out new ways of adapting to life now that you're an amputee. Um, obviously acceptance is, is a big one, um, but for the physical aspects, the, the uh, getting to the bathroom and what to do, what not to do, what to keep a mental note about, what to be aware of, what to bring when you're on uh, missions. If it's hot outside, if it's cold outside, um, keep in mind if you wear jeans and your liner's long, you have to go to the bathroom. So uh, there's a lot that I covered and I hope that everyone that needs this video watched it till the end. And I really appreciate everyone's uh, attention and, and I'm just here for you guys. My email is amputeeangler at gmail.com. And you can email me since it seems like my comments are disabled until I have more followers. Uh, so if you have questions about being an amputee, feel free to shoot me a email uh, and I can link up with you on social media or Facebook Messenger, um, uh, Instagram Messenger. I'm, I'm helping a couple amputees in a couple groups on on Facebook and on Instagram. I'm helping a gentleman that's going through some things. So, you know, reach out to me. I'm actually, I'll talk with you. I'll, I'll help you solve a problem that you have. I'll, I'll do what I can to help fix the situation. You know, and if it's, you know, maybe it's something extra than I have. I have a million extra ply socks. I have, you know, a million things that, that I don't use. So, you know, there's giveaways. Uh, I'm gonna do prosthetic leg reviews from all the ones I've had. Um, so look forward to all these upcoming videos if you have questions that you want answered about a specific thing if there's something you can't figure out if there's something you can't get past if there's something that's really bothering you shoot me an email I'll make a video about it maybe we can 
collaborate and I can kind of get the, the, the side of you that maybe you're going through and see what your situation is. And maybe I can take my experience and apply it to your situation and make your life easier. So that's kind of the point of my channel. Thank you so much for watching. This is episode three. Look forward to episode four uh, of the Amputee 101 series. Thanks, guys. Peace out.